I will get Biden's radical left ideology out of our military, and I did. I did. And in the first day, they put it back. They signed an executive order, and they put it back. It was gone. We will abolish every Biden COVID mandate and rehire every patriot who was fired from our military with an apology and full back pay. Thank you. And they deserve an apology and they deserve full back pay and they'll get it. All right, guys. So we got to talk about Trump's speech last night that I did live stream. I decided to live stream it at the last minute because I was like, I should experiment with it um, because I, I feel like I never do live streams and I probably should start doing them. But I really don't like doing them. Uh, how about I, I will start live streaming um, some of the things that are more important, like maybe the debates and stuff like that. I'll probably start doing that. So I did it last night for Trump's speech, and I was very, very, very pleasantly surprised with Trump's speech. And there was a part of his speech that I want to talk about here that I really want to drive home some points for people because Trump's speech last night, I thought it was very, very, very good. Okay. And I want to talk about why, because there's a whole lot of people going back and forth now saying that, Hey, I'm not voting for Trump again. Trump's time is over. His speech was boring. It was tired, you know, yada, yada, yada. Okay. And this is a lose, lose situation for Trump because if Trump would have came out here and was all angry, which he was angry, you could tell he, he seemed agitated, which, which I get. I understand when the walls are closing in on you, the establishment is coming after you. Everybody thinks that you're washed up and the country is in such bad shape, right? I can understand why he seemed that way. But again, if he came out here and he was super angry and he was going crazy, people would say he, he's demented, right? He's an angry old man now. That's what he would have said. The fact that he came out and he was calm and controlled, which is the best version of Trump, that is the version of Trump that I would like to see moving forward in the future. Well, he's low energy, right? He's low energy. His time is up. Again, a lose-lose situation for the guy. But last night, I think it was a W for Trump, okay? I think it was a W despite what people are going to say. And I think it was a W for some very simple reasons. One, he stuck to a core message, okay? His core message was that the Democrats and the Biden administration are ruining this country. Here are all the great things we did under our administration contrasted to what the Biden administration is doing right now, okay? It is like night and day when it comes to the economy, when it comes to foreign policy, when it comes to the border, it is night and day. I have a proven track record of being good on these issues, okay? Uh, Joe Biden has a proven track record of being bad on these issues. For example, when we talk about foreign policy, right? Uh, Trump touted his Abraham Accords, generally having peace in the Middle East, being a lot more peaceful than it is now. Uh, he was willing to at least try to uh, speak with our political enemies, like, for example, Kim Jong-un. Right now, Biden is unwilling to do that, right? Biden doesn't want to talk to Putin, okay? He's not really trying to de-escalate what's going on between Ukraine and Russia. I mean, we had a little scare uh, with the missile thing that happened in, in, in Poland, okay? Um, but again, you know, to me, I think he clearly presented, again, a contrast between the current situation and what the situation was like before Biden, particularly before COVID, which in my opinion is probably the main reason that Trump is not in office right now is because of COVID and what happened with COVID. Again, it was a very difficult situation to deal with given that at the time, you really didn't know uh, how dangerous this, vi this virus actually was. We didn't know how dangerous it was. We didn't know how much it spread. So I think that he was putting a rock in a hard place. No matter what he did, he was going to be criticized for it. Because initially, when Trump did lockdown, when he was for the lockdowns, when again the virus first happened, nobody knew what was going on. Um, every death was still blamed on him. Didn't matter if he locked down or what, people were still saying that, yeah, hey, you know, Trump is causing people to die, right? Trump killing people. Then Trump came out and said, look, I'm against the lockdowns, okay? I, I think that the lockdowns are more harmful than helpful at this point. He basically made it a state issue, okay? That, that's what he did. He basically said, look, it's a state issue at this point. And of course, he's going to get criticized from the left for that, 
okay, by saying that, well, he's killing folks, right? By, again, making it a state issue, he's killing people. So, again, if he locks down, if he makes a state issue, doesn't matter to the left, he's just doing a bad job. People contrast this with Ron DeSantis' response, and there's this perception that Ron DeSantis was never pro-lockdown. He was always anti-lockdown. And this is not true. Ron DeSantis and Trump essentially had the same response. When coronavirus first arrived, because nobody knew what it was, how dangerous it was, nobody knew, Ron DeSantis locked down the state. <laughs> Ron DeSantis did lock down Florida. He was for the lockdowns initially, like everybody else, okay? Because we knew nothing about it. Trump and Ron DeSantis basically became against the lockdowns at the same time. It's just that Ron DeSantis was governor of Florida, and he had sole authority to get rid of all the lockdown measures that was in place in the state. And he did that in September of 2020. But for whatever reason, again, there's this perception that Trump was pro-lockdown while DeSantis was anti-lockdown. And that's, that's just simply not true. It's not true at all. Ron DeSantis came out and gave an interview and said, I wish I had spoke out against Trump's lockdown measures when he implemented them. And I'm just like, well, you, you did the exact same thing. That's why you didn't speak out, because at the time you thought it was right. Again, this is not a criticism of Ron DeSantis. All it is is that I think that there's this unfair criticism of Trump in regards to his coronavirus response that Ron DeSantis is getting credit for when they essentially did the exact same thing in terms of their stance, okay? Trump was pro-lockdowns at first, and then he decided, I'm not for the lockdowns. I don't want a nationwide lockdown anymore. He made it a state thing. He allowed the states to do what they thought was best. And he was encouraging states to open up. Ron DeSantis, because he has actual control over his state, he decided in September, once it became clear that the lockdowns were hurting his economy too much, Florida is a tourism state. He decided, you know what? We're just going to open up. That was the right decision. I'm not criticizing DeSantis for the decision. I'm just saying uh, Trump gets unfair criticism for that. Okay. <laughs> but I've been on that topic too long. That's just something I've noticed. Um, but Trump, again, in this speech, uh, speaking of DeSantis, right? Since we're talking about DeSantis, another good part about this speech is that he didn't mention DeSantis. He did not talk about DeSantis at all. He did not attack any of his political allies. He stuck to attacking the Biden administration, right? If he was going to make fun of somebody, he made fun of Biden and the Democrats. That's exactly what he should do. If he's going to do that moving forward, that's a good thing. That's a W. You take away the divisiveness that has happened because of the attacks. He also didn't talk about the 2020 election, which is a good thing. Well, why is that a good thing? Well, it's because he's not giving the media something else to say about talking about the so-called attack on democracy. Listen, I got grievances with the 2020 election just like everybody else, okay? But we got to move forward into the future. And what I love about Trump's speech is that he said, look, it's going to take all of us, right? This movement, this job is not just for me. It's for everybody. And what we're going to do in 2024 is that we're going to go out and get more votes. He said that during the midterms, people didn't feel the pain enough, right? People don't understand what's coming. And we're going to go out and convince people that, hey, you should vote for us if you want to solve these problems. That is the right message. His message was inclusive. It was very inclusive. It was not divisive at all. And that is a positive thing for Trump, and he should maintain that moving forward. He doesn't need to attack unless attack first. Now, if he attacks first, hey, gloves off. But he needs to, again, focus on things that are positive, don't give the media just ammunition to attack him. That, that's what talking about the 2020 election is. It gives people ammunition to attack him, okay? And don't go out to political enemies. He did all that in this speech. And also a part of the speech that I like from Trump as well, too, is when he came out and he called for draining the swamp and he actually presented a policy agenda to do that, including advocating for term limits, which is something that I think uh, most people in the conservative base agree with. We definitely need term limits. We definitely need to end politicians 
insider trading. We need to end that as well, too. We need to end politicians being able to just become lobbyists after being in office, get paid millions and millions and millions of dollars to go into work on behalf of corporate interest to influence politics, right? Because that's the cycle. How do these guys get so rich? Well, they get into office. They do the bidding of their donors, their big corporate donors, okay? And then what they do is that they go and they get these fancy jobs after they get out of Congress as advisors, right, to certain, you know, again, political organizations or companies. And then all they got to do is just go and they, you know, pressure their former colleagues to act in the best interest of whoever they're representing. And they get paid millions and millions of dollars for it. That's how these politicians get rich. That has to end. When you're talking about draining the swamp, you have to get rid of the financial corruption. Those are things that Trump called for. And if he can stick to that message, if he can stick to a message of a future for this country, I think that he can get on track. I think that maybe just maybe he can pull some people back in that have been turned off by some of the latest things that he said and he's done, okay? I'm just saying, a politically calculated, non-divisive Trump is the best Trump. And if he can stick with that, I think that that is going to greatly benefit him in the future. So again, I think his speech was a W in the sense that he did a great job of reminding people how great it was when he was in office pre-COVID how bad it is now, the Biden administration. He avoided uh, falling into easy traps where the mainstream liberal media can criticize him for something that he said, okay? And he called for concrete policies to, in my opinion, drain the swamp and to lessen the corruption in Washington. Now, one thing that he did say that's super controversial is that he called for the death penalty for drug dealers, which, in my opinion... That's a little bit too extreme. And I hope that that's just red meat, right? What I call red meat is that you, you toss out an extreme policy like that, that is, is never going to get any real traction, okay? I don't think people are going to get behind that uh, as a way to appease a certain group of people, right? I hope that's what that was. But then again, Trump doesn't drink. He doesn't smoke. He doesn't do drugs. This could be a personal thing for him. It could be a personal thing for him. Maybe he just doesn't like drugs that much. But outside of that, the, the, the drug thing, I thought the speech was almost perfect. I really did. So again, Trump, he's in a situation where it's once again, you know, the establishment's against him, uh, Republican and Democrat, okay? Uh, it's basically just like it was when he first announced back in 2016. The question is, is that is there still enough excitement in the base for him to ultimately make the same type of magical run. That remains to be seen. But let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.